Infinity chills me. I mean that literally. My body weakens, my balance wavers when I try to envision a cosmos of infinite size. I try to project my mind's eye to see stars and spaces going on and on and on and on. The universe, or multiple universes, very similar or very different, on and on and on and on. I can conceive of a cosmos whose size is infinite. I can explain it, but I cannot fathom it. Yet I wonder what an infinite cosmos would mean. What do I mean by mean? I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn, and if closer to truth is my desire to discern an infinite cosmos, I am already getting dizzy. What would an infinite cosmos mean? Clues of origins and ends, nature of existence, place of human beings. To ask is to probe the special nature of infinity. Imagine the largest number you can. Infinity is larger still, infinitely larger. Infinity is not a number, it's more a process. Infinity never ends. Contemplating an infinite cosmos is so disorienting. That's why I begin with a cosmological visionary of impeccable good sense. An expert on galaxy formation, black holes, and multiple universes, the UK astronomer royal, Martin Rees. Martin, what would an infinite universe or an infinite multiverse really mean? Well, there's nothing new at all about the concept of infinite space. It was speculated about in the 18th century and even by the Greeks. But what is new is the realization that uh, uh, this may not just be a dreary on and on, but might indeed uh, be an infinite space with a complicated structure. The problem of infinity, of course, is that um, uh, it doesn't obey the normal laws of arithmetic. Uh, you can double it and it's the same. And uh, so it raises problems with uh, issues like um, probability. And when we come to the question of asking, are we in a typical or probable part of this infinite universe? That's a rather difficult question because the where you put a measure in a technical sense on the universe is something which is rather arbitrary and difficult when it's infinite. If you assume that the universe go, goes on infinitely in one way or another, then you would assume that every state of, of affairs uh, occurs, and you have to assume every state of affairs occurs infinitely. And so people talk about there are other Martin mm -hmm. Reeses and Robert Kuhn sitting here talking to each other an infinite number of times mm -hmm. as you go out further and further. It seems to me at times a bit silly. Well, I think that's an obvious consequence if you assume that all uh, combinatorial options are fulfilled and if you go on for infinity and have enough space to uh, realize all the options. Of course, any such uh, combination is going to be far, far, far beyond our horizon. Sure. And so carrying that concept further, you have to have a really, really vast universe before you can have uh, um, objects like ourselves being duplicated. But I don't see why one should be disturbed by this. I think it's a natural consequence of an infinite universe. But, but it has really no relationship to us. It's just, a, it's just a random expression of everything so that everything that can exist will exist. And so mm. if there is something that looks like you very far from here, it's not you. It doesn't really, it doesn't really mean anything. Th th that's right. And there will be uh, uh, combinations of us and in the next 10 seconds, they will all diverge. Yes, because some sure. may um, stand up, some may sit down, <laughs> and they'll do different things. So, so all options are uh, carried out somewhere in the future as well as in the past. Do you have an intuition whether our universe that came from our Big Bang is or will be infinite or finite, and whether a multiverse which uh, likely exists 
is infinite or finite? Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is not a matter for intuition. It's a scientific question to which we could seek the answer, although we may not find it. I think I try and avoid having these intuitions. But the only rational response is to say, we just don't know enough to say whether it's likely or unlikely. And uh, whatever our preferences are, we should accept that we just don't know, but will eventually come within the scope of science. So I think we should be open-minded and remember that our preferences count for nothing. We must accept the universe as it is. Got it, Martin. I accept that we don't know whether our universe is infinite or finite, or even whether there is variety and strange structure, not just unending uniformity. And I appreciate that reality need not conform to our intuitions or preferences, that only science can provide answers. Yet, I'm impatient. I'd like to know now how to deep dive into the infinite ocean of space and time, matter and energy. Scientist friends invite me to join the Foundation Questions Institute, FQXI, which looks beyond today's physics and cosmology. So when I learn of their conference on the nature of time, on board a ship cruising from Norway to Denmark, I jump at the chance to inquire about an infinite universe. I start with the FQXI Associate Scientific Director, Anthony Aguirre. So when we ask whether the universe is infinite or finite, we have to be really careful about the question we're asking. Because what Einstein has taught us is that what we really should think about is space-time. Space and time are one thing. And we can divide them up in different ways. Now, what it turns out to happen is that if you divide space and time up in one way, it could be that space is infinite. But if you divide the very same space-time up in a different way, it's finite. That sounds in really incredible. It, it is, and it, it leads to one of the most amazing things, which is that you can take some region, say, you know, here it is, I'm gonna create something here, and this is going to turn into an, a universe that is infinite in space, that has infinite volume at each time. Now that seems just totally ludicrous, right? That it's got finite volume, how is it gonna turn into something with infinite volume? And, but the decomposing space time into space and time is the key. So the way it, it works in some sense is that suppose I take some nugget of stuff and it starts growing and I let it grow for an infinite amount of time, okay? Then you, you'll agree that this thing has grown into something with infinite space time volume. Well, it goes on forever, but if it starts finite, it, it is always some number. Whatever number you want, it'll eventually get there and exceed it. But at any given time, it's still finite. That's what you might think. But <laughs> if you think about it this way, so if I take this thing, then a moment later, maybe it's this big. A moment right, later, right, it's right, this right, big. Right, so at each time, it has a finite size, yeah, just right, as you said. Right. But that's according to when I say um, this moment, a moment later, yes, a moment yes, later. That's a definition yes. of uh, what a moment is Fair. and what's existing at one time. Now, I can take that same thing and slice and dice it into space and time in a slightly different way, such that when you look at that, at every moment, it looks like it is spatially infinite. The region you're allowed to look at is only the region inside this, this blob. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. So you confine yourself to inside the blob, right. but you can cut it up in such a way that inside that blob, it looks like an infinite universe. And that cut is as legitimate as the, the, the intuitive one that we come to? Even more. Oh. So <laughs> once you go inside the blob, when you cut it that way that I described, it actually looks uniform. It looks homogeneous. In fact, just like the Big Bang cosmology, which is homogeneous, right. that is uniform, and the same in every direction. And this is just our local universe. That's right. So outside this blob, there could be other stuff. Right. And so our universe that we're in can be infinite cut this way, and yet there still can be infinite numbers of other universes within which each one would be infinite. Exactly. Is that right? That's right. Well, I sounded like I knew what I was talking about, <laughs> but I certainly don't. It, but it's true. What it looks like if you're in one of these universes and you say, how do I get out? How do I see you know, other stuff? It generally looks like you had to travel back in time, because in some sense, to go out of the, the blob that you're in, you have to go through earlier and earlier oh. instances, or, or travel faster than light is another way to think about well, it. Well, because if you have m more than one universe, each of which is infinite in, in, in space, 
it would seem like they had to overlap. They don't have to overlap, but that is permissible because it, it can be the case if they start far enough apart, they're in the external description in which they look finite. They're expanding towards each other. So they're both growing at this high rate. And so you can think of the edges of them moving towards each other, but the intervening space is expanding even faster. So they're uh, moving towards each other, but the space is going faster, and so but, they never meet. But looked at from a th uh, from outside, they both look finite. They both look finite. But inside? They both look infinite. Yeah, and, and fundamentally, why is that the case? It's because the question of whether it's finite or infinite is one that depends on your definition of time. And you're free to make any definition you like. It's mind-boggling, I know. <laughs> and and it, well, the first time I learned this, I just couldn't believe it because it, it, you, you think certain things are just philosophically impossible. Yeah, it just seems like a logical contradiction. Right, and then you realize that physics has taught you some way to actually do it nonetheless. Our sense of what is possible and impossible is based on those ideas about how space and time are our intuitively. Our ordinary perceptions. Right, and those aren't correct. Those aren't correct. Multiple infinite universes? It's not just that our universe is infinite in size, but that there are an infinite number of universes like ours, each of which is infinite in size. Infinities within infinities. Viewed from outside, universes appear finite. Viewed from inside, universes appear infinite. Impossible? Well, physics overrides human intuitions. Space-time. Cut it one way, space is finite with a specific size. Cut it another way, space is infinite, going on forever. Assuming the cosmos is infinite, why is it so? As our ship nears Copenhagen, I rush to speak with physicist Raphael Busso, who has theorized a vast landscape of possible universes. There are different ways that the universe could be infinite. One way it could be infinite is if it was infinite to start with. If for some reason it was created already as infinite space, uh, it might sound surprising, but then it could still be expanding anyway. <laughs> uh, and that is certainly a model that, that, that fits the data reasonably well. But there are a number of reasons that we believe now that even if the universe was spatially finite, it does become infinite over time. Uh, that ex the expansion of the universe is actually eternal, at least on the largest scales, and never completely comes to a halt everywhere. It's called eternal inflation, and it arises very naturally. Now, in that case, what happens is that by the sheer size of the, of the universe that you generate, Everything that can happen in that universe will happen over and over and over again in different enormously separated regions. I mean, don't expect to find another, another copy of us talking in the room next door. But if you go, not just billions of light years, but exponentially more than that far away from here, uh, perhaps there's another you and me do, having exactly the same conversation right now. It's perplexing to us because it tells us that we don't really know how to compute probabilities for anything. Because everything is infinite. There are infinitely many yous who win the lottery in their lifetime, even though that is supposed to be quite unlikely. And we think we know that that's unlikely and how to compute that. But once you start asking questions about what we should see in cosmology, when we look out into the sky, you start realizing that you really are getting your, your whole method of computing probabilities for anything undermined by these infinities. And, and that, that's really the core of science. If we can't compute what should happen, if we can't say that this is likely and this is unlikely, how could we ever rule out a theory and say that it's wrong because it says that what happens all the time is unlikely? So how do we get to a solution? Well, the way that we have tried to deal with the infinities is to somehow find rules for considering only a portion of this infinite universe and ignoring the rest, that portion being finite, so that we can count how many times you win the lottery and how many times you don't, and then we can say the ratio of those two numbers is, is, is the probability for uh, winning the lottery. The way that all of the most successful measure proposals work that we have so far is to end the universe at a certain time. The piece, the finite piece that you keep is what happened prior to that time, and the infinite piece that you throw away is what happened afterwards. 
And it works really well, the predictions are good, but there's one prediction which is really crazy sounding. And you can see immediately what that prediction is. We are computing probabilities at the end of the day in a universe that ends at a certain time, and the probabilities reflect that. So the probabilities in particular tell you that there is a certain probability per unit time for the world to end. <laughs> now, that probability is not very high, and you know the chances are the universe is going to last for another several billion years before it ends. But just conceptually, it's a very puzzling prediction. And what do you mean by end? That the universe really behaves as if all of a sudden it stopped. Like you, you reach a certain time and it doesn't go on. Like everything just disappears. Now, you're right in being puzzled. This runs completely counter to our intuition as physicists. It's a prediction that doesn't conflict with experiment. And so we should consider the possibility that it's actually correct. There is a finite probability that within the next several billion years, the universe is going to come to an end right here. <laughs> Perhaps the universe was always infinite, whatever that may mean. Or perhaps the universe became infinite over time. But how could something finite become infinite, no matter how fast and long it grows? Then that measure problem. An infinite universe undermines all probabilities. Because when everything happens an infinite number of times, nothing is more or less likely. A solution? Sample a small segment of the universe. Ignore the infinite rest. But then, the unexpected. A finite probability that the universe will end, abruptly end. And if time is infinite, anything with a finite probability must happen. So the universe must end. I knew infinity was weird. What to do? Are there different ways in which space and time can be infinite? As the FQXI conference continues in Copenhagen, I speak with Sean Carroll, a cosmologist at Caltech. A thousand years from now, when we have a perfect understanding of cosmology, it will involve either an infinite universe or a finite one. All of the attempts so far to seriously come up with true laws of physics have involved infinity in one way or another. It doesn't mean the universe is physically infinitely big, but it might mean that between my fingers there are an infinite number of points, or there are an infinite number of possibilities for the quantum state of a single particle, much less a whole bunch of particles. So I don't think we should be afraid of infinity. It plays a role in our theories right now. We might end up being able to do without it, but it's, we should keep it on the table. Is the universe infinite? Or is it always a very big number, but it's never really infinity? So there's sort of two versions of that. Is the universe infinite in space? Is it infinitely big? And is it infinite in time? Does it last forever, either to the future or the past or both? So you can imagine, you know, four possibilities, <laughs> finite in space, finite in time, etc. The universe could be finite in space or infinite in space. It could be finite in time and infinite in time. Personally, I think it can't be both finite in space and infinite in time. And the reason why is because that would mean there's an only a finite number of things that can happen and infinitely long for them all to happen. So you just get into a Nietzschean recurrence where everything happens an infinite number of times and it doesn't make sense how to do it. If both are infinite, then we have a different kind of problem that we can't calculate anything. It's this it's official problem in cosmology known as the measure problem. When an infinite number of things happen for an infinite long period of time, how can you make sense of a question like, what is the probability that something happens? If the universe is finite in space and finite in time, then all the calculational problems go away, but you have a really bizarre universe. Like if there's only one universe that lasts a finite time and it's not that big, why does it look as weird as our universe does? So every possibility that is viable has what looks like a serious problem, and that means that we don't yet know what we're doing really. So tell me right now, your opinion, tell me the secret. Universe, infinite or, or finite, time and space? I think the universe is infinite in both time and space. I think that that is our best hope for coming up with a natural and compelling explanation for the little part of the universe that we can actually see. It doesn't look 
typical. It doesn't look like you would expect. And I think the right way to account for that is to say, well, it's an outgrowth of a much, much bigger process, a process that goes on forever and will never end. I like creating the combinations, arraying finite and infinite in space and in time. But when every possibility has a serious problem, I agree with Sean. We don't yet know what we're really doing. Could space and time be a real infinity? I press for meaning, significance, implications, ramifications, clues about the deep nature of existence. I don't expect real meaning, just ideas on possible meaning. I hear of an experimental philosopher at Yale who wonders how an infinite universe would affect our moral imperatives. Morality? Infinity? The coupling seems, well, odd. But that's the mystical power of infinity. I speak with Joshua Nob. Josh, if indeed there is an infinity in the universe, in terms of numbers of galaxies, stars, planets, what would that mean as a philosopher? Well, for philosophers, it poses a really difficult question. One thing that we've often thought is that what we are required to do morally is to make things be better on the whole. So we have to increase the total amount, say, of happiness in the universe, decrease the total amount of death and so forth. But what we seem to be seeing is that the total in all of these cases is infinite. There's infinite happiness in the universe. There's an infinite amount of people being tortured to death at this moment. So nothing I do then can have any effect on the total. Regardless of what I do, the total amount of, of happiness in the universe is still going to be infinite. What's the implication of that? Well, it seems like to the extent that you think life has any meaning at all, it can't have to do with something about the total number of people. It must be something that has to do with certain particular people. So right now, for example, I could say something really nice to you or I could say something mean to you, but there are infinitely many people who are exactly like you throughout the universe, infinitely many of whom something nice will happen to, and infinitely many of whom something mean will happen to. So the only way that I could justify trying to be nice to you is in terms of something that will happen to you in particular, and not to sort of the total of pe number of people qualitatively identical to you. As a philosopher, does that bother you? You know, I think there's something bothersome about the idea that nothing that we do can be unique in the way that we thought it was. Whenever you're coming up with some idea that you think is original, not only is it not unique, it's an experience that infinitely many people have had. So this conversation, which we're having right now, is occurring in infinitely many regions of our universe at this one moment. There's something a little bit depressing about knowing that we're so not special. Well, there may be something incoherent about it, do you think? It's certainly it's not mathematically incoherent, but there's something troubling existentially about it. Don't you think this, though, may be a characteristic of the concept of infinity, which is not just the largest number, but it's not a number. It's just a, a definitional kind of thing. And maybe, maybe uh, invested in that term is, is more than, uh, than really exists. You might think that there are certain kinds of confusions we face when we reach up to this concept of the infinite, but it certainly seems as though if I'm interested in making your life better, there's no sense in which I could be increasing the total amount of happiness that there is in the universe. If that total is infinite, there's nothing I can do about it in my actions right now. So it really does seem to raise some very perplexing questions for the moral philosophy that we had at earlier decades. Are infinities in the cosmos real? To discern meaning, consider the possibilities. One, a universe finite in time, finite in space. The cosmos came into being and continues to expand. This is the old model of science and the unchanging model of Western religion. Two, a universe finite in time, infinite in space. The cosmos came into being and has become infinite in size. This is the new model of inflationary cosmology. Three, a universe infinite in time, finite in space. 
The cosmos has always existed in a limited space, an odd way for things to be. Four, a universe infinite in time, infinite in space. The cosmos has always existed in unlimited space. This is coherent, however mind-boggling. Are we approaching a maximum explication of reality? An infinite number of universes, infinite in size, infinite in time, nesting infinities, towers of infinities, enough. I plead for common sense. Is general relativity common sense? No. Quantum physics, double no. Am I any closer to truth? For complete interviews and for further information, please visit closertotruth.com.